If you're tired of the standard business and marketing fundamentals, frameworks, and funnels, <laughs> you need a little mischief. Get ready to turn up the volume on the CEO Mischief Maker podcast, where you access conversations with seasoned business owners who have smashed through mindset barriers, innovated the standard boring business and marketing playbooks, and executed future-paced strategies with bleeding edge tools and tactics to micro fail their way into massive success and growth. We are Mindset Impact Strategic Catalysts, helping innovative entrepreneurs focus. We are CEO Mischief Makers. Ready to make a little mischief? Hey, hey, CEO Mischief Makers, you know who I am, MKJ, but I get to introduce you to an incredible gentleman that I have had the pleasure of um, chatting with and being in his community and reading his books, Mr. Mark Schaefer. How you doing? Oh, I'm doing so exceptionally well right at this moment, no matter what my day has been up until now, because I get to see your smiling face. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So again, as I mentioned to you earlier, and I've talked about you on, on, uh, in all my communities and online, your book, Marketing Rebellion, was really a, a big aha for me. And so all of my community, anyone who joins my community gets that book. I send it oh, wow. to them. Um, because it really encapsulates what I do, which is conversational design. And it, mm -hmm. it, it takes that conversation and, and makes it very specific to, uh, to what we're, we're working on at the time. So I know who you are and I know what you do, but just in case there's somebody out there who doesn't, you know, just kind of tell us what you do. Well, I, I do a lot, but the su succinct, I, I think I, I counted MK that, uh, I have 24 different revenue streams. Uh, but the succinct idea is that I am a marketing strategist. So that's how I do my consulting. I am a keynote speaker and um, people uh, generally hire me because they love one of my books. I've uh, now I'm the author of 10 books. My 10th book came out just a few weeks ago. I'm also a college educator. I teach in the graduate studies program at Rutgers University, occasionally go up there a few times a year to teach in a, in a special program. And as you know, I'm, I also have a community, I blog, I have a podcast, and I teach a personal branding class, which you are a graduate of. <laughs> yeah, so that I love the fact of, that you have so many different revenue streams, because that really, I'm not going to go on a tangent, but I so could, uh, <laughs> that uh, that really is the the uh, the future of any any kind of business, uh, not putting all your eggs in one basket, but really having lots of different baskets with lots of smaller eggs in them. Um, yeah. So anyway, I won't go on that tangent, but oh my gosh, it's a really strong pull. So but we are here to talk about mindset in this particular episode. And I know just from being in your community, I know there you tell stories so well. Uh, so I know I'm not going to be disappointed in the next uh, stories that you might tell. But really, my, um, my question to you is, share a mindset shift or a few, whichever you prefer, share mm -hmm. a mindset shift that has occurred for you that either started you on this journey or change your direction somewhere in this journey, some aha or some transformation that you had, or started you on this journey you're on now with community and the and the book that you had just finished, or the next book that you're on, because I know you're probably writing another one. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just enjoying this one right now. Yeah, I love this challenge. I, I, I love the challenge. And I just want to tell you how much I love the format of your show, the innovation and the heart and intellect you've poured into your show. So I thought about this and, you know, off the top of my head, there were three really significant sort of mindset shifts for me. And I'm going to go in the, like my uh, linear order of how this happened. So one was I got to uh, one of the most amazing experiences of my life is for three years when I was in graduate school, I got to study under Peter Drucker. Peter Drucker is one of the most famous marketing and management uh, authors and thought leaders, probably number one in history. And so I got to study under him for three years. We could do a whole program just on him. Yeah. But a, a big way he impacted me was his humble philosophy toward leadership. 
Um, you know, I came in at that point, I was the youngest person ever accepted into this program. So I was like out to show how smart I was, how to prove myself. And he taught in a way where he said, being a great leader isn't having all the right answers. It's having all the right questions. And that really inf changed my life in so many ways to really be a humble leader and, and as a consultant to really respect the experience and authority of the people that I work with. So then as I was moving up the corporate ladder and taking on more and more responsibility, um, I started a, a second master's degree program in applied behavioral sciences. And as part of this program, uh, I was uh, met a very influential teacher who eventually became a mentor and a friend. And uh, so in this program, there was this you know, workshop where we were supposed to talk about our feelings. And I didn't really want to do that. I didn't like that. It's not how I grew up. And he knew I was struggling with this. And he sat down beside me and he said, Mark, you know, just, you know, can you just name, like, what's the feeling? What's the emotional state you feel most often? Well, of course, it was obvious. It was anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> because I was in this program instead of back at work and all this stuff was piled up. So I said, well, it's anxiety. And then I was being kind of a smart ass. I turned to him. Yeah. I said, well, what's the feeling you have most of the time? And he looked right at me with his beautiful blue eyes and didn't miss a beat. He said, joy. And you can see right above me there, there's the word joy, which is always in front of me. And I knew it was true. This guy, you could tell he was joyful all the time. And I thought, I am not living my life in the good way. I need to adopt a mindset that embraces joy instead of all this anxiety. So, uh, and that, and really, honestly, from that moment forward, I was living my life in a, in a different way. The third one came more recently. As you mentioned, I've started this uh, community. and. Um, to be effective uh, leading a community, you have to abandon many of the leadership lessons that you learn at a university. And it's it's been a wonderful experience. It's been a humbling experience. Again, trust you have to, you know, trust the the intellect and the goodwill of your community to lead it towards success. You can't really force it in any way. And I think an example of, of this is, um, you know, when I started this community, I thought, well, everybody's going to be interested in what I'm interested in, of course. So I'm going to start a little room on personal branding. I'm going to start a little room on, you know, speaking and writing books. And those are the emptiest rooms in the whole place <laughs> because the community said, no, Mark, we're taking you a different way. And it was a better way. It, and and the, our community, uh, which you're a wonderful part of, it has become my university. Almost everything I speak about, almost everything I write about, almost everything you know, when I'm up on a on a stage, you know, I'm I'm teaching about some idea that came first out of this community. And that's that's been a big mindset shift in terms of leadership for me. Would you agree all three of those things that you mentioned, um, in order to even be open to those possibilities of a different way of thinking, you have to have some kind of an inherent uh, curiosity mm, mm -hmm. or something beyond yourself, right? That's exactly the word I, 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 I would have used. And um, I, I think that's something, you know, I don't know if you can learn that. Can you learn that? Maybe I'd, I'd like to interview you about that. <laughs> um, you know, I, I know that I, in my family, I come from, there are people in my family who were, they were, they were, they, their job was a plumber, but they were like a scientist on the side yeah. uh, or a historian on the side because they were so curious. They, some, some of my relatives never even finished high school, but they became very brilliant, brilliant people. Be and, and someone told me once that, that, that spirit of my, my 
my grandfather and my uncles, it shows up in me, this curious, this curious spirit. That's certainly a very high, uh, high praise, high compliment uh, for me. And I think that is such an amazing soft skill in this world. I think to be relevant, you know, I agree with Peter Drucker, you don't have to have all the right que- all the right answers. You have to have the right questions. But to have the right questions, you've got to be curious. You've got to dabble. You've got to have some courage to explore, experiment, try new things, and not just say, this is over my head. I'm going to go away. So right. I think curiosity is a very, very important soft skill today for any profession. Yeah, I agree. And and I don't know whether it's learned or it's inborn. I, coming from a firstborn daughter in an Italian family where the women are just supposed to have all the answers. It just is the way it is. If someone comes to you and asks you something, you have the answer. Whether you do or not, you better just say it. Uh, and so I had to unlearn that in order to be curious when mm-hmm. I went off to college and when I did all these things. And, uh, and I think that's the number one thing that has allowed me to stay relevant, if you will, in technology, if nothing else. I mean, an old lady like me being relevant in AI and technology is just like, what, yeah. who are you? <laughs> You're some weird animal. But yeah, I think curiosity is it. And um, those each of those mindset shifts that you talk about, the leadership and, and community, obviously, uh, they, they are, how did they actually, how did, what did you do with that mindset shift? Where did you go next? Um, and, and how did that open up the next avenue, if you will, for the, because would you also agree before you answer that, would you also agree that a mindset shift, once you accept it and it actually shifts the way you look at the world, that just Mm -hmm. opens you up to the next mindset shift you need to have in order to take the next step wherever you're going. Yeah, and again, this this I wonder how much of this is really part of of my personality that you know I'm I'm not you know I'm I'm not a person that like it has to be my way. It, it's something beyond curiosity. It's it's perhaps being flexible and being humble and saying I'm open to being to to learning. I think in each of these three cases, I was probably at a point in my life where maybe I was feeling vulnerable. I was feeling like maybe I wasn't relevant in some way. You know, in the Peter Drucker example, you know, I was the youngest person in the program and, you know, trying to, you know, prove myself. And now here I am sitting at the feet of one of the greatest business minds ever. And the, uh, you know, when I was in the graduate school program with Robert Crosby, you know, I needed to be vulnerable and couldn't be. Because that's, and I knew something was wrong. I mean, I knew that was, I was dysfunctional in some way. <laughs> uh, because, you know, I just, you know, I I grew up in a family where it was, you know, you know, boys don't cry and, you know, yeah. it, it, yeah. you know that kind of stuff, right? Oh, yeah. And, you know, so he helped me get over some of those things. And then, you know, with the with the community, it's like, I just have a sense of urgency to 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 do it and get it right i've i've failed that community several times in my life and you know i i just i wrote this new book called belonging to the brand and it it hopefully has opened my eyes to the things that i need to do right and i have a great sense of urgency that this is my last best chance to create a meaningful community and i'm not going to blow it and uh so again it's it's this sort of crossroads in my life where um you know i have a need a need to change a need to do to be to be better and i'm open to new ideas okay hold on if your mindset was shifted you were inspired to innovate and you were spurred into action don't just move on with your day Focus, my friend, and take a few minutes to visit ceomischiefmaker.com to learn more about the value that was shared with you today. Please act now and create some CEO mischief of your own.